How's it going guys and welcome back to another episode of Trailmakers Creations. Thanks for joining me. Today we're going to start with the, this is my blue car, but it's my red boat. Yeah, yeah, see, this is my blue car. I mean, it's obviously not the greatest looking car in the world, right? Like, uh, I'm not going to go buy this off the lot. But uh, yeah, see, it's a car, it drives. See, it's got four wheels and stuff. But I was in the uh, I was in transformer mode, so I was like, uh, you know, I, I I just I don't know why, but I wanted to build some transformers. So this is what started it. So we have the blue car, and then when you go into the water, we hit number one, and it becomes my red boat. See? My blue car becomes my red boat. And we can drive it back up onto the land again. This is using that, those wonderful upwards facing propellers. God forbid I should let that rest for a while. We'll use that until there's absolutely no uses left for it. And yes, you may have noticed the stash is gone. That was so 2021. Moving ahead. But yeah, so we can hit land like this and then uh, as soon as we dock, basically, we can just Hit number one again and drive away. The sides basically fold out and down all the way around 180 degrees so that they're facing downwards at the middle of the boat and then the uh, they end up every all the red pieces are on the inside and the blue pieces are on the outside. So that was a pretty straightforward one not really straightforward but as far as uh, I wasn't really going for aesthetics I was just going for functionality does it actually work? Can I just drive into the water, change into a boat, and everything is fully automatic from there. They automatically kick in all those engines as soon as I hit number one and transform. So all I gotta do is steer. It's kinda like a hovercraft, but like a boat. Same time. So that is the blue car red boat. I'll be uploading that to the shop, just in case any of you wanna download it and crash it into something. All right, let's take a look at our next build. All right, so sticking with our Transformer theme, this is what I built after I built the blue boat, red car, red car, blue boat, McThingy. So I built this, I was like, okay, it's actually gonna look like a car. But believe it or not, this is a monster truck. I know, right? It actually works really well, check this out. So we'd be driving along and then we hit number one, See, now, now I'm driving my pickup. That's my pickup truck now. Da, da, da. It's not a very fast pickup truck. But it's got high wheelbase. Lots of grand clearance, know what I mean? But it's like, man, we be late for dinner, so we got to we got to get back to the house real quick. So let's just, let's just switch back to, oh, yeah, we got an extra wheel sticking out. Look at that, wonderful, wonderful. Made it home. It, oh, hey, yeah, okay, well, right? Aren't you glad real physics ain't like trail maker physics? See a car like that in the parking lot flipping around with a wheel inside out. So it's amazing how many things are inside this thing that are actually glitched in using the piston glitch. So we can hit number one. You'll see those big wheels actually fold out. The little wheels are on the inside of those wheels. And then those pistons extend out, and there's a set of pistons as well that retracts in. They fold up on the inside, and as long as I've got that gap open there for the piston to extend out, and the head of the piston, I believe, is the only thing that really has like as much of a, a collision. So as long as you can leave a gap for that, then it should uh, it should fold out without too much too too much trouble. But that is a uh, quite the transformation from a car to a full-blown pickup truck. I was quite happy with the way that turned out. It actually looks like a pickup truck. You know there's something wrong with it because there's parts missing. But if you look at it from the right angle, you're like, hey, that's all right. That's kind of a different looking pickup truck. And you're like, what? I ain't got no pickup truck, man. I didn't build a pickup truck. I built a car, man. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Talking about? So let's take just take a quick look at this in build mode just so you guys can see what's all in there. So here's, we've got a bunch of pistons underneath here. You can see the wheels are folded up on the inside. Inside here. 
We've got all our goodies here. We've got pistons here that bring the the roof down to, at the right angle. There's also hinges here and hinges at the bottom of those pistons so that it brings it back and down a little bit. Give it that nice low slope and that also gives me the option of raising that up straight when it switches into pickup truck mode. The top back here of the car folds down straight, 90 degrees straight down to give the truck bed lining. And then these wheels, these pistons fold in, these pistons stay out and then the whole, all the wheel, the wheel completely because it's connected directly to that piston, completely ignores all of these blocks and then folds all the way out. Bang. Oh, well, it, bang, ish. Ish. Just like that. Right, we've got the smokestack sticking out the top. We got mirrors. We are styling. We even got brake lights. So that is called... Oh, they, uh, nailed it. That is called the orange peel. Just because that's the name I decided to give it. It's orange peel, see? It's one thing, and they unpeel it, and it's something. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Oh, that's painful. Ow, 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 ow. My leg, my leg, my leg. All right, let's take a look at our next build, folks. So if there's one thing I know everybody hates, and that's moving day, right? If you got to move, that's like, man, it's headaches. You got to find somebody with a truck that doesn't have a bumper sticker that says, no, I won't help you move. All that kind of stuff, right? It's just a pain. You don't have no idea how much stuff you own until you actually decide to move. So this is my little house that I built. Let's go make it easy for me to move. This is my house copter. I know, and you're looking at that little propeller on top going, dude, that's not going to lift your house, man. I don't give... I don't care what you've done to it, it's not big enough, it's not going to work. But you're right, you're right, it's not going to work. So as you can see, we've got some little fire pots out front here, and we've got some little grass shrubbery hedges, a little walkway up to my seat here, my throne, nice little skylight up there looking out the bedroom window. But when moving day comes, here I can just get in my, in my seat here, when moving day comes, we'll be like, fine, let's move. I can see why it's called a house of copter. I just fly away. Fine, I'll move my house somewhere else. What about right over here on this rock? What if we want to move right over here on this rock? Fine. Ain't nobody gonna bother me on the rock. We're gonna spin around this way here. We're gonna drift a little bit, drift a little bit. All right, and then we're gonna spin around like this. I'm gonna face the sun, into the sun. Come on, spin around a little bit. Like this, and there we go, right about there. Close up shop. Ta da! What do you think? How's the copter? Again, in the whole mood of the, I gotta make things that transform one thing to another. I was in the mood, in the zone. You know what I mean? So, yeah, how's the copter? So, the walls pull apart, the helicopter blades are on the inside there, the uh, skylight section of the roof folds down. Everything in front folds up, uh, the walls in the front there angle back, and then the back of the house, that's what it normally looks like. Again, I can't put anything to fill that hole in there or else it won't work, or else I can't bring the, uh, the cockpit down over top of him. So then when we go do like this, those fold back, those extend out, it gives me my bit of thrust and control in the back there for uh, vertical control. And then we've just got some uh, hidden stuff on the inside there. We do have a stabilizer in there with some angle sensors and helicopter engines. And we can fly forward like this. Again, it stays nice and stable. Not very fast, you know. It's not a very fast flying house. You see how that turns into like a cockpit for Buddy? Drops down around him like that. Let's see, where are we going to land? Uh, let's, let's maybe go up here. And we'll get a nice view, house with a view. Maybe right here, right out here on this little peninsula sticking out. That'd be a nice place we can watch the boats come in. And the docks down there. We'll get right down here on the edge. Oh, oh, come on now, spin around a little bit. A little bit like this, right like that. Here we go, that's nice. Close shop. Oh! 
All the plumber. That's the only problem with building things that fit this tightly together. They don't always want to fit that tightly together. Come on now. A little bit of this, a little jiggle jiggle. A little altitude maybe. No, no. A little flip over. Okay, how about we open you up? All the way. Spin your right, round, right round, a little bit like this, just like that. Close you up. Ta da! And now, when I jump out, I'm uh, actually stuck in the house. It's a good thing there's a hole in the back, or else I wouldn't be able to get out. So that is the house copter. Believe it or not, near maximum complexity. Just because there's so many hinges at 10 a pop or 5 complexity a pop, they add up quick. Let's fly out of here. Take a look at our next build. So I was thinking to myself, with well, these new sails, of course I've been playing a lot with the sails lately. These new sails, I wonder if we can make like, uh, like fabric stuff now, like, like a blimp that had like a dirigible or a zeppelin that's got actual like panels. Cause, Cause we have like materials for that now, right? Ish, kind of. So then I built this. I don't know. It does. It's not. It doesn't look like a, like a flip, does it? Oh, gee. Oh, no. Especially when it's spinning like that. Hey, hey, settle down. How about we just respawn? There we go. Nice and calm. We can go up like this, and then we can hit number one. Actually, let's give it a little bit of gas. number two and then we can hit number one and it opens up like a balloon yeah number two that toggles our little propellers we got one little propeller at the top and then one little propeller at the bottom that's all we got we got mini thrusters for steering and again those are just hinges and gimbals on top there to keep us upright Nice and big and airy. Not very fast. Space bar takes us up. Left shift takes us down. Those are gimbals again set on negative one. Pull straight down. Work great for things like that. Especially when you're trying to counter uh, your... If you're using any kind of automated hovering devices. You need something to counter whatever's keeping you in the air, so those uh, inverted gimbals or negative force gimbals work really well. So that is the, I think I'm going to call that the Bozo Blimp, just because it's all colorful like that, like Bozo the Clown, and then it can go flat. And you can still fly it like this, but it's flat. It doesn't steer very well. There's so many wings that are horizontal, oh, that uh, even you can see the front and back actually pitch up and down, those wings but it doesn't pitch at all. I still have to use my left shift down, and even then it doesn't want to see it right now, I'm holding down. Those negative gimbals will not pull it down. Way too many sails. Super rigid. Like I said, they work really well for wings. They actually work better than the wings for uh, stability and rigidity. We can pop that back open. And we can be our bozo blimp. Now we actually have steering again. So that was a fun build. That was a fun thing to experiment with. But I had some other ideas while I was building this for a better way to build a blimp. To start with the nose rather than to try and start with the body and work my way to the nose because it's uh, too difficult to try and get a close shape here. So then I started on the second blimp. Let's have a look at that. So now when someone says blimp, you're usually thinking of, you know, uh, a large rigid body or soft body or heavier than air aircraft. That's kind of set up like this. It might be pretty big. Not necessarily square, but square works, especially for the ends, because you can see that these multiple flags here, sails, all uh, come together at a 20 degree angle and actually all meet very nicely. We can open them. So we could have small aircraft actually try and fly through there. A little something small that wouldn't it? But again, this thing's made out of paper, not unlike a real blimp or uh, a Zeppelin. Uh, rigid frame, but very, very lightweight frame. Very cool to see something fly in there and you can capture something inside there. So we have our massive passenger bay down here. 
which is totally open to the inside up there because when all of those were closed in with windows there was no way of getting out so I left this option to open and close these so that you actually had some way of getting out of the blimp when everything was closed off. So spacebar operates our, or activates our four forward facing propellers and on those propellers you can see that we have upwards facing and downwards facing as well that aren't doing anything. We rotate this way, we turn front and back both turn and the propellers that are facing up and down are actually for our landing procedure. So left shift takes us up with our gimbals to go down like uh, let's say we wanted to land and I mean you can land this thing almost anywhere right once you get the the controls. So let's say we want to land down here and pick up some some uh, passengers that want to come on to the blimp. So I will push W. That's like an air brake as well. That will slow it down. And then I will just hit my space bar again because W actually rotated our steering controls and our props. As you can see there, they'll actually turn and engage going down and there we are down on the ground we can jump out and like I said see it puts me up here uh, and when there was no hole so I had to open up some of these sails here so we can actually get into here it makes for a very large open cavity in here you can walk around and at least you can get out through here through the sides that was all glass before you couldn't, you couldn't get out I was trapped in my own blimp man it's like a blimp nightmare but in here on the inside, you can see we've got our gimbal jets up there. Not a whole hell of a lot of them. It's a really lightweight frame, actually. And uh, more difficult steering this many sails uh, than anything else. So we got a stabilizer here with our helicopter engine and our angle sensors. And then we just have our little seat up front here, which gives actually a really good first-person view. You can totally pilot this thing in first person. So it's actually fairly simple on the inside. This is about 670 complexity. Again, all the uh, the hinges holding together. And I mean, they're only even set on like every third or fourth panel, not even on all the panels. Again, keep complexity down. But this is a lot better shape overall than the first one, than that Bozo blimp. So that is the checkered blimp. carry quite a few passengers in there you get everybody give everybody a tour of a new map or an island or something that'd be great and then you could fire a bunch of missiles from inside here ha <laughs> ha yeah all right let's take a look at our next build all right so who doesn't love a good hovercraft raise your hand if you love a good hovercraft i love a good hovercraft not easy to build but very satisfying when you do build one that works well so this one here this here is called the vector one now, as you can see, we got some angled, slightly angled on the side. We got some pads there, slightly angled. And we have some angled pieces up here in the front, kind of like the bow of a boat. Notice that? Kind of angled up and uh, inwards a little bit. So let's jump in the seat here. Now you can see where all those hover pads are. The ones on the sides are slightly angled at like a 20 degrees. And then there's some in the middle that are flat. We have a ones here in the front, angled up like the bow of a boat. This thing was designed for the high seas. The front two are on suspension as well, which you will see bounce every now and then, absorbing some shock. You will also remember that hover pads do not work on water if you're doing, uh, I think it's less than 50 kilometers an hour. You will sink in the water. So, you put some of these upwards facing water propellers, and guess what? Now you don't need to worry no more about sitting still in the water can move very slowly it's not a problem it's like this see it's like hey no problem I'm going to turn sideways here come for stopping do a little drifting in the water like this catch some fishes see right now is no hover pads holding me up hover pads not work this slow but those uh, little propellers there they are working just fine they are always on they are making no difference except maybe a little bit speed wise but that's okay. The Vector 1, it's got enough speed, enough speed. Just space bar. You can see how we turn here. 
Oh, oh, you can see how we try and turn here. How we try and turn here. See how we sink here. See, this is the sinking portion of the show. Pop it in. It will shoot up on its own. Even though there's nothing now in this thing that floats. Those propellers automatically engage. So yes, we need a little bit more open space than around in them corners there. Because the only real steering we have here is because we're not touching the water, right? The only real steering we have there is those fins in the back that pop out. But at least we get our leaning inwards. This thing drives very much like a, uh, a speedboat. Leans into the corner and the opposite fin there, you'll notice the opposite fin actually pulls down a little bit to keep us from turning too much into the turn and rolling over. Our front end there being angled up like that as well helps. And if we do drop into the water, we can hold both steering. Pulls out like almost like air brakes and slow us down pretty good. We can rotate. We've got thrusters for steering. Turning this way will automatically stop us. Give it a little gas and we can just hover in one spot. It's nice not having to worry about sinking and being able to spawn in your hovercraft on a water point without uh, it automatically sinking and having to be moving. So it did lean a little bit more before to have a little bit more turn, but then it also had the occasional 50% chance of the nose dipping into the water and, uh, and you're wiping out. So I figured I'd rather have the stability of not having to worry about resetting all the time, being able to go where you're going. This thing will do about 250 tops kilometers. We'll let off on the gas here a little bit, knowing that we're coming up to land, and again, it is hovercraft. So we are functional on land as well. Just want to be a little more careful, I imagine, because we have those propellers hanging down. Oh, same, we already lost one. Rebuild! Haha! <laughs> so as long as we're careful can actually work on land as well. But she's... Ooh, that was close. She's definitely a water vehicle. And it is so close to wanting to fly. Okay, did we learn our lesson? Oh, did we? Did we? Alright, that's the Vector 1. That's pretty cool, Hovercraft. Let's take a look at the last build of this video. Check this thing out. This thing is made up of servos, sails, hinges, and blocks. That's it. Servos, sails, hinges, and blocks. Here at Servo Sales Hinges and Blocks, we'll fight for your rights and get you the money you deserve. So this is about as simple as it gets. This is an ornithopter. This is zero power cores. This is the Ornithoptic Rainbow Serpentine. That's, I know, say that three times fast. All right, so all we're gonna do is hit number one. And we're gonna fly away. Yo, still like that. It's so simple. It's just so easy. So we have the serpentine movement in the body, just up and down. Nothing, there's no steering left and right except for the head. So that we can actually steer. So we just have the ripple effect. And then there is a little bit of flappiness happening with offset timing of the body pieces uh, at like a 30 degree angle for those wings that are stretched out to the side. And that's actually what gives us our forward propulsion is when it serpentines down, the wings are facing forward when they're coming down, and that gives us forward propulsion. And these things generate so much lift on their own that any kind of forward movement, and uh, they'll hold themselves in the air, which is why we have a head that's shaped like this. It's almost like a, uh, an albatross. I almost thought about making that bottom jaw open, but it was, uh, I don't, I don't wanna push things too far. It was just, uh, I was just so happy that it worked as simply as it did. That's it. That's it. That's it. Give it some effort. We just gotta steer our way out of the water, that's all. So there you go. Rainbow Serpentine. Ornithoptic version. Not quite a flying snake. But this is like a sail snake thingy. 
And actually really good control too. You can fly this thing through the rings of fire. It will almost fly straight up. Mind you, it does stall pretty bad. Too bad I couldn't have this thing hanging off the back of my blimp. Off the bozo blimp though, it looked pretty cool. It looked like a big flag. Sail today. All right guys, we're gonna leave that one here. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for tuning in. If you're a subscriber, thank you very much for subscribing. If you're not, just do it, man. Just hit that button. Oh, you're in there like flip. Don't forget to hit that like button. Leave a comment. Let me know which one was your favorite build in this video. And thanks again for all the suggestions. And we will see you guys in the next one. Ciao.